So the questions I'm going to ask is how has AI been advancing the robotic space? And more broadly, how is it advancing the automation space in general? And we're going to look at different investing opportunities, both in what is happening in sort of more, more mature markets, as well as burgeoning markets where AI and robotics, remote sensing and drones, machine learning and mobility is playing a significant role. So why should you listen to me? Well, first off, you probably shouldn't. Uh, but uh, I've been doing this for quite a, quite a bit. I have a syndicate, Autonomy Ventures, where I've had a number of exits out of. I'm also a venture partner here in town at FFEC. We're um, a local venture capital firm. We have five funds. We have about $180 million in uh, AUM. We have about 90 companies in our portfolio. And a significant amount of those are within the drone space. We were very early within uh, Skycatch. We just invested in Civ Drone, which is in the construction surveying market, as well as in robotics. And I uh, write trade periodicals in the robotics space, whimsically called the Robot Rabbi. And you can go to my blog under the same name there and, uh, if you're interested. And also, I host events here in town um, under uh, Meetup. We have about uh, 3,000 su subscribers to our events. Uh, Robot Lab, we do them quarterly. Our last one was on hacking the industrial internet with someone from Homeland Security, and we'll do the next one this winter. So if you're interested, you could sign up at uh, meetup forward slash Robot Lab. So we already know that robotics, autonomous mobility, drones is driving billions of dollars of invested capital and M&A activity, and it's an estimated to to drive trillions of dollars uh, within the coming uh, decade. And that crosses multiple verticals. That's from shipping and logistics, that's in the industrial space, that's in the consumer space, and, and the aging and healthcare space, as well as in defense. And what I want to do is, you know, ask you and try to, for us to come up with a theory why it's happening now. Why is now a good time to invest? And I would say there's three, you know, major factors that are creating the perfect storm. Number one is data. You know, everyone has their cell phones, they're walking around, you can take pictures, it's okay, um, with supercomputers in their pocket. We're, we're accumulating immense amount of data. On the streets, just outside this beautiful view, you know, the urban planners of New York City, every, um, you know, uh, light, every fixture is accumulating immense amount of pedestrian and vehicular data to know how to manage all these people, all these vehicles, all this activity in the city as we move forward to turn this aging city into a smart city. And, and it's a lot more than that. Every plane is surveying uh, its landscape. We have satellites going ar ar around the Earth and even the space station. So we're accumulating an immense amount of data. And for the first time, that data can now not only be shared within an enterprise, but via the cloud, it can be shared affordably anywhere by anyone. And we saw those amazing AR examples of these 3D models being shared in China while, you know, in, on the West Coast at Nike's headquarters, they're looking at that, that sneaker and they're, they're combining together to make collaborative decision making. That could not be possible without the cloud. And then the third aspect of this perfect storm is sensor class and the declining price of sensors. If you looked at autonomous vehicles and the Velodyne sensor, it used to cost upwards of $70,000 to put those spinning sensors on top of a, a car. Now it's below 10,000 and there's actually much cheaper uh, LiDAR sensors than the Velodyne one. So we have declining sensor costs, we have the, the cloud which enables you know, the ability to share anywhere by anyone and this immense amount of data. So robotics has been around for a long time. You know, uh, in the 1960s, industrial robots started to be shipped into these big factories. And by the 1980s in Detroit, we had dark factories. Anybody familiar with, the, with that term? Okay. So a dark factory is, is a factory without lights, without windows, and without people. And these robots work 24-7. And they're really dangerous. How do you know they're dangerous? Well, they're yellow. So anything yellow is dangerous. A bee, dangerous. Okay, number two is, I don't know if I have a laser here, but they have fences on either side of them. And so, and just look at the sheer scale. They're, look at the, the car and look at the size of the robot. Uh, they're, you know, if you get hit by one of these, it doesn't last, you know, your life is over pretty quickly. Now there are humans in this factory. There are two, two people controlling this entire production line. 
So what has happened today? Well, those fences have come down. And using artificial intelligence, a robot knows where it is within a place. It has force sensing. So if this gentleman's arm comes too close to that robot, it can push back. It has vision. It knows where he is and knows where the production line is. It knows via the cloud, it knows where the other robots are. And this factory here in China, they're doing a QoS operation here, and they're controlling this robot, not with those big mainframe computers, but with tablets. And so these robots are working collaboratively. In fact, they're called cobots. And it's not just happening in manufacturing. In 2012, Amazon purchased Kiva Systems for $775 million. That was a game changer for the logistics warehousing space. Now, Amazon pre-Kiva, let's look at the photo on the right. You know, they, this gentleman in the white t-shirt had to pull that cart, you know, miles every day to get that book, that CD that you would order in 2012. And, to, and in fact, Amazon in 1997, when they first launched, you know how they would move people around? On roller skates, multiple football fields in length before they realized that was a really bad idea on the workers' comp side. And so, in uh, uh, post-2012, you have the, these robots now that move the shelving to the picker. The, so now, the, the, this guy doesn't have to walk miles. The, the shelving comes to the, the picker, and, it puts, and they put it in a box, and they ship it to your door. What's more is, the, and this is the brilliance of the cloud and of the, of the robot, is it reorganizes the, the warehouse. So traditionally, a warehouse, you know, you have rows and stacks of pallets and, and boxes. But, but in an Amazon warehouse with the Kiva system, the best sellers are on the perimeter and the dogs are on the inside. And so they can easily get to the items that are selling best. And, they, and they're connected, you know, automatically uh, online. Now, once that package has been shipped, I mean packed, it needs to be shipped. And so I'm not going to spend too much time on autonomous vehicles uh, because there's a lot written on that. I'm going to just, uh, you know, glance over this. But what's a, a bigger market and a sooner market than, say, uh, you know, getting your consumer autonomous vehicle and, 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 you know, texting and watching movies while commuting is in the shipping and the trucking space. And there's a number of companies. This is a company purchased by uh, Uber for $628 million after they actually did this test. And this is a test in, uh, from Denver to Colorado Springs, moving 50,000 cans of Budweiser. And so this is live on the highway. And as you can see, it's using lots of vision, lots of LiDAR sensors that I mentioned before. And it's staying within those lanes. And so this is a really, you know, there's no people on a highway. There's no bicycles on a highway. There's no one with a baby stroller on a highway. It's really easy to move trucks from point A to point B. And then those community deliveries would be done by manually. And, and so it's not just being done with, say, a fully autonomous car or truck, excuse me, that it would be done semi-autonomous where you can sort of wagon train them together, where you'd have a lead truck with a driver and then the, the other trucks would follow that lead truck. And it's being done on the water. Rolls-Royce, uh, that's their concept for a ship they plan to um, release in 2021, I believe, on the water for dry and wet shipping. And obviously, you're familiar with autonomous vehicles and, and in the air uh, with the, uh, the drone space and the Evotol, you know, the, uh, the idea that Uber Elevate, where you're going to have you know, human-sized drones that you can go from downtown Manhattan all the way uptown. I still take a city bike, but yeah. So with all this data, and I just want to touch on this, another big area, and this is not robots, but this is what's driving robots, is computing and the compute powder, power of quantum computers. Because we have so much data, it's almost too big for a binary computer to calculate all those different routes, all that transportation needs of, of the city, the energy needs. And so today, you have auto companies, you have urban planners, you, you, you have tier ones, you know, working with, with quantum computing companies. And, and being a New Yorker, and IBM in Yorktown Heights, and, and Quantum One, which I, I believe is in um, uh, the New York Times today, you know, that um, they, they're already working with a, a number of uh, urban planning uh, companies. And so how does that translate? Well, this is an example, and I saw this a couple years ago at CES, but this is Toyota's concept. You know, this is, imagine, you know, 
going a, in a shuttle like this and you can go sleep and you can be in DC the next day. But it, I think more importantly is, that I'm sure many of you are familiar with VIA, so imagine VIA happening in a geo-fenced in area, meaning it's safe from people and cars, and it's just going up Sixth Avenue, it's just doing drop-ups. You know, we've had autonomous transportation in New York City, you know, for quite some time. Do you guys know what it is? No, that's not autonomous. I, I wish it was, but it's not. The air train, the air train from Jamaica to JFK, that's an autonomous. Uh, so, I mean, they, that shuttle bu bus that I just described, and when you have aging infrastructure, this is a really important thing. So, these are, these are you know, well-established markets. Let's go into some, you know, n n nascent areas where AI-infused devices, machines, um, you know, are really game changers. A big area is construction. And this is a great example where you have, you know, more job openings than applicants. And so when you, whenever you have this, you, you have a drive towards technology. And so today's construction sites, and we're standing in huts and yards, and so you just have to look out the window to take a look, right, is, is really high tech. You know, this guy right here, what, his vest, his hat, they're IoT sensors. They're saying where he is, that if he picks up the wrong material, it's alerting a project manager that something's wrong there. They they're, they're obviously have a lot of vision sensors. They're using robots. They're using autonomous dump trucks. And what's more is because there's this labor shortage and construction activity worldwide is $8 trillion of an industry that you, the future of this is where, you know, you were talking about AutoCAD before. You, there's a Blue Plume Robotics in Delaware where you can upload via AutoCAD, you know, your drawings and it can be printed via robots, the wood framing for luxury homes. This is not homesteaders, you know, prefab houses. These are luxury homes. In fact, Marriott is doing this for new motels where they're shipping the walls and the, and the ceiling and the floors all together. Can you not hear me? All right, is that better? No? Hello? Okay, all right. All right, so, did you guys hear the first part of it? <laughs> okay, so um, they're shipping with the walls, uh, you know, the, the, the beds and the TVs and, and, and everything else. And so, you, and that's Blueprint Robotics. How about this robot right here? This is a, a company that's publicly traded called Fast Bricks, uh, the publicly traded on the Australian exchange, and where this robot is actually, uh, you know, re replacing the menial labor of a mason in laying out the bricks. The bricks, these are interlocking bricks, and so the tradesmen would come in and finish it off there. And, and so this is a great, uh, you know, um, example where this would not be possible without vision sensors, without artificial intelligence, in, in taking those plans and building it in reality. So after you built it, you know, what's going to go inside of it? So how many have been to Amazon Go here? Okay, a handful. So Amazon Go was a real game changer for retail. You know, it's, it's like kind of the first time you do it, it's like kind of weird, right? You, they, in fact, actually have associates telling you how to do it. Uh, because it's so new and different, and basically it's a cashierless, associate-less um, associate store where you can go and take anything off the shelf and walk out. You don't have to go to a kiosk, you don't have to scan anything, you just walk out. And it knows exactly where you are. And, the, and it, it's not just Amazon, you know, there's a multitude of retailers doing cashierless stores as well as robot um, enabled stores. And so this happens through vision uh, with Amazon. You go to the Amazon app, you go to the QR code. You know, it's going to be stocked with robots. You know, it, it knows where things are through RFID. And, and as I said before, it's not just Amazon. Over here we got Walmart, you know, doing POS scanning out of stock in retailers cost them billions and billions of dollars because if you don't find that item in Walmart, you're just going to go to your Amazon app and buy it there, right? And then this is the McDonald's right above my, my office, cashierless, uh, you know, um, fast food. And so what, what we're seeing is this shift within restaurants, within retail of, of, of automating. And, the, and as stores are closing, investment in technology is only going up. So. You know, as we're becoming much more globally, upwardly mobile and, and, and wealthy, where the, you know, we're consuming more food, 
uh, globally than ever before. And so sensors, soil sensors, drones, satellites are, are increasing yield. And at the same time, I don't know if you know this, but we have a president here in the United States who, do, who does want migrant workers. And so it's driving you know, investment in automation. And so this is abundant robotics out of, uh, spun out of SRI that Google's investing in. Um, that uh, you know is pick, uh, picking apples in Washington State. This um, movie is not so great because it's so pixelated, but it can really tell the difference between a Granny Smith green apple and the leaves, which is pretty incredible. And and it doesn't hurt the product using the vacuum there. And so this is happening. And and so just to quickly, and I'm running out of time. It's not just happening in the field, it's happening in the OR. There's millions of robotic-assisted surgeries. The next generation would be you know, uh, targeted therapeutics using microbots, using magnetics uh, you know, to, to drive them to um, the, the targeted area, or nanotechnology where they could detect uh, cancer markers even before they form. A big area that, you know, as investors to look at is aging in place. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with, um, ooh, I'm in the negative territory over there, uh, that um, in Japan they actually have a, a national initiative to, because they have uh, a declining population with uh, aging and the mort mortality rates and a tough immigration policy to replace menial uh, labor with robots. This is the only robot that's not real in my presentation. This is Robot and Frank, which is a movie. But uh, robots, uh, we're going to have age, you know, 70 million people over the age of 65 by 2030 in America. We don't have enough caregivers. And so we're seeing sensors go on with robots and so Okay. Awesome.